Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's Art Master Vision. Uh, today I'm going to be painting this um, rather different English Civil War figure. He's uh, a conversion. This is a resin barrel. Uh, I'm not sure where we got the barrel from, uh, but it's uh, quite large, large enough for a 28mm uh, man to fit inside. It's actually a solid barrel, so what we did is we got the torso from a foundry uh, kelt, I think it was, um, but any any naked um, torso will do. And we had a razor saw and we cut it off um, from the belly and cut the head off as well and pinned him in and then we got a head from uh, Redoubt English Civil War head and uh, drilled a hole in the, where the neck is and pinned the head on um, and the last thing to do after that is to actually put some water in it because he's having a bath um, makeshift bath in a barrel so I think the mix uh, was made from uh, sand um, and watered down um, uh, filler wood filler probably uh, maybe a little, little bit of uh, PVA glue I'm not sure um, but we've got it dripping down the side of the barrel here and a little bit there so uh, because it's got sand in it it kind of makes it look bubbly um, so it makes it a bit easier to paint as well but uh, gives the impression that he's having a nice bath anyway uh, enough chit chat we're gonna get on with painting um, I'm gonna start with a barrel because uh, I want to do a little bit of dry brushing on that probably um, but I, I don't know I might just highlight it normally but it's going to have a base coat of German camo black brown uh, this figure is for a game um, being put on at Salute 2011 this year uh, it's a large English Civil War game with the Royalist Army painted by us at Artmaster Studio. Uh, it's going to be quite spectacular. The scenery is excellent. Um, I think the uh, the people putting it on are called the Crew and Nantwich War Games Club. Uh, obviously, you can look it up on the Salute website for any details. Also, for the uh, table number which you can find the map of so you can find it when you're at the show um, but there's there's a lot of interesting things there and I highly recommend you go and check that out Uh, I think the table number is actually DG07 um, but like I said have a ch double check on the uh, Salute website to find that out of course uh, we will have our own painting stand you can come and check out uh, some of our painting miniatures uh, for display and for sale um, plus some extra things probably because uh, that's the the wood undercoated. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly dry it off um, with a hair dryer, and then we can start highlighting. Alright, so um, 
looking at the barrel itself, um, the wood grain is uh, cast on fairly nicely, but um, it's probably not deep enough to make a decent dry brush job. Um, not to my liking anyway, so I'm going to actually highlight it manually uh, by putting in strokes rather than uh, just brushing over it sideways to catch the grain. So I'm going to use a uh, leather belt from the Vallejo Panzer 80 range. Highlighting it this way does actually give it um, quite a different look to uh, dry brushing. Um, yeah, definitely, um, I wouldn't say, I'm not sure really, I mean perhaps dry brushing is more of a, gives more of a natural look, um, but it doesn't quite, um, doesn't quite have as much detail to it, it doesn't pick out each individual line uh, as we're doing here. I guess this is more of a stylized, uh, almost cartoony look, um, but it, it makes the uh, detail stand out um, from further, further away, so uh, that's also a good thing. takes it a bit longer um, to highlight it this way um, but I actually prefer this look overall uh, to a, a dry brush uh, yeah so I'd like to quickly take this opportunity to thank everyone who actually um, gets the uh, chance to watch it live, uh, the vision, and um, to the people who actually uh, create a Ustream account and sign in and comment live as well. I really appreciate all the feedbacks and comments that I get. Um, it's, it's good to get some uh, input as it's uh, happening live, uh, get some questions asked. And uh, it's nice to hear suggestions as well for future visions and what people would like to see. Uh, somebody suggested um, one dedicated to just uh, horses, so you can see the, the way that I paint horses and also um, variations of triads that I use uh, on horses, which is something I, I actually would like to do. Um, but if anyone else uh, would like to see that or if they have any other ideas I really appreciate the input. Of course uh, you don't have to comment live you can always send me an email to uh, artmasterstudio at hotmail.co.uk or um, message me on the Steve Dean forum. Uh, we also have a Facebook account um, so if you just search Art Master Studio on there, you can just uh, leave a comment on the wall page. Uh, for anyone who missed it at the start, um, this is a resin barrel um, with a torso from a Celt figure. I believe it's a foundry uh, Celt, um, or it might be a ancient German or something like that. But um, and uh, the head is a redoubt English Civil War head. So it's a mix of lots of different things. So it's not actually available to buy commercially, but 
uh, it's not too hard of a conversion uh, to make yourself okay so that's the first highlight on the wood uh, also the actual um, water is a, a mixture of um, sand uh, wood filler and uh, watered down wood filler that is um, perhaps uh, some PVA glue as well okay so second highlight on the wood grain we're going to use a beige brown fellow model colour Basically, we're just going to continue doing what we was doing before, um, but have slightly thinner lines and slightly less lines, um, just to give it a sort of a, a highlight here and there, give some extra depth to the wood. If you can manage to go over the lines that you've actually put on in the first place, uh, then that will give it more of a natural highlight look. Um, but to be honest, uh, if the lines are thin enough, it doesn't really matter if you uh, go over the base coat slightly with this highlight, um, because the overall effect um, just you know just gives the effect of the wood wood grain itself. Uh, especially from a distance no one's really going to scrutinise your work on wood grain like this uh, it, it is what it is really it just uh, looks natural no matter how messy you are with it really as long as the lines are thin enough going in the right direction I think you'll be okay but it is important to note that you have to have enough contrast in the colours that you're using uh, if there wasn't uh, and it was too subtle then uh, there wouldn't really be much point in doing all the lines because uh, it just wouldn't have the same effect So that's the uh, wood done. Uh, I think we're going to do the bubbles now, or the water. Uh, water's kind of a tricky thing to paint. I always find it difficult because obviously water's clear. Um, so you, I don't really like adding too much blue to it. Um, so I'm going to use the uh, bubble effect that we've got with the sand to my advantage um, so I, I am going to have blue in it um, but to be honest it's going to be mostly white bubbles and for the blue I'm just going to use uh, Americana Deep Midnight Blue uh, this is more of a grey blue than say uh, a Prussian blue here um, which is a bit more intense um, this is definitely leaning t more towards the grey scale. I'm not really going to bother to go uh, over too much of the bubbles 
um, going directly to the edges really because uh, I think the edges are going to be mostly white anyway. Okay, so I've just added some uh, deep sky blue into the uh, base coat, which has made this sort of colour here. We're going to use this for a highlight, and then we're going to start adding some white to it and get it increasingly lighter. And then we can start building up the bubbles. As you can see, I'm not really being too uh, careful with the way I put this on. Um, it's not quite a stipple, but it's more of a just sort of patting around to get a texture um, whilst leaving some of the colour below showing uh, for the shadows and where the water's slightly darker. Uh, but as you can see, we're going to keep doing this. Uh, until it gets lighter and lighter Probably not a good idea to splash water all over the place, even if we are painting it. effect certainly does look real. <laughs> I'm 
Alright, so uh, now moving on with the actual water on the figure uh, rather than on the uh, table. Uh, I've just added some more water, uh, white in now and as you can see we're adding a lot less um, but it's uh, starting to almost give the effect of uh, the bubbles there. Um, we will probably just use pure white next. I guess it's uh, just personal preference of how much white you put in or how bubbly you want it to actually look. Uh, you might prefer a water that's more of a, a grey or perhaps leaning towards more of a dirtier brown. Uh, look I guess what was a tricky thing to paint So this is just uh, off-white <coughs> that I'm using at the moment. So that will probably about do it for the water. Alright, so quickly I'm just going to undercoat the feather uh, to give that some time to dry. Uh, I'm going to use PAL sand. This is uh, pal sand or ivory, I guess, would be fine. Undercoat the flesh now. And I'm going to start with my uh, usual colour, shadows, <coughs> shadows flesh. various uh, ways of painting large areas of flesh 
uh, such as on torsos like this. Um, it's kind of a different um, story than painting uh, individual hands and faces. Uh, a couple of ways I'd recommend is um, basically the way I'm doing it now uh, is using the usual method um, but I'm just gonna put on slightly more of the first highlight than I normally would so I'm, I'm not gonna leave as much of this uh, color showing as I normally would and perhaps give it a few extra highlights uh, to add some extra depth because there's uh, more area showing uh, you could be much more subtle, which is what most people would like. Um, basically, the base coat might be uh, lighter than normal, um, so the uh, next layers um, there wouldn't be as much contrast. Uh, you might end up putting more layers on that way, but the overall effect is much more subtle. Uh, also, perhaps. Um, taking a colour like Flesh Base, which will be the second colour that I'm using, and uh, put that on flat, so that's kind of a mid flesh tone, um, and then giving it a, a wash with, say, uh, Games Workshop um, Devil and Mud, or uh, if you want it more of a red flesh wash, uh, Ogryn Flesh and then highlighting it up from there uh, they're just a, a few ways of doing it Uh, but we're not actually, to keep in mind, we're not actually aiming to get this figure to look, um, you know, photorealistic. It's not really designed, uh, the paint job is not really designed to take uh, an extremely massive uh, close up picture. Obviously, if you're going to be looking at it in extreme close up, you will uh, see the contrast between layers. Um, but the idea is that it will look good uh, just looking at it normally, especially on a tabletop. Alright, so just quickly whilst that's drying, um, I'm going to undercoat the uh, rings on the barrel with uh, bolt gun metal. This is probably slightly too light, uh, so we'll, we might give it two washes with Games Workshop Bad Air Black rather than the one that we uh, would normally do. You could of course uh, just use a darker silver uh, to start with, uh, such as the metallic um, Air model black from the uh, Vallejo range, or something like gun metal from Vallejo that's a little bit darker.
Uh, how many hours of painting do I do per day? Uh, that's a good question. Um, actually, it varies. Uh, there's no real solid answer to that because obviously there's a lot of uh, administration things to do, such as emails and other things like uh, prepping figures up, um, buying figures, etc. You know, all the mundane stuff. Um, so yeah, but um, generally I do paint quite a bit. Um, so I, c I can't really give a solid figure, but um, but yeah, I, I generally paint uh, during the day uh, as well as the evenings. Uh, next we're going to do the hat, undercoat that because the flesh is still drying. Um, I'm going to do it burnt umber. probably paint more than is um, natural to really uh, to be honest but really the more you put into it the more you get out of it so it can only be a good thing Generally, I find that when I am painting, um, the hours seem to pass uh, generally quite quickly. You kind of get in a zone, and almost uh, if you haven't really got any outside things to do, places to be, then you can just kind of get stuck into something. And before you know it, you've been painting for like five, six hours straight. quite relaxing I find I'm going to give him uh, blonde hair so we're going to use uh, US field drab obviously it's good to take uh, regular breaks uh, to stretch your legs, stretch your neck, etc. I do find that in the summer um, especially uh, when it gets really hot and during the day uh, I find it difficult to paint when it's uh, too hot so I like to paint uh, early in the mornings it, during the summer and uh, in the evenings when it starts to cool down slightly Alright, so I'm just going to give them a quick dry off and then we can start highlighting. Alright, so we might as well uh, commence the flesh highlighting. 
Um, I've run out of room on my palette, so I'm just going to have to clean some of that slightly. I use one of those round palettes um, with all the circular indentations around the edge. Uh, there's quite a few, but as you can see, they get uh, filled up quite quickly. And I also paint on these areas, um, but as you can see, that gets filled up quite quickly as well. Generally every morning I clear out my palette but by the evening it's full up of paint. Um, so I guess actually it would be a good idea to have more than one palette so when one's full up you can just swap over. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to start with the flesh base um, and I will actually add a teeny amount of shadows flesh in just to take the contrast off slightly. It's interesting, I've seen um, quite a few painters like to use uh, tiles, like uh, bathroom tiles or kitchen tiles. Um, but to be honest, I'm more in favour of the uh, artist palettes. I find it easier to mix, and it's also nice being able to spin it round fairly easily to find the paint that you want. But I guess uh, tiles are good for cleaning, just run them under the tap, give them a quick scrub down. Uh, the danger of adding in uh, too much of the uh, base coat shadows flesh with the flesh base uh, is that the overall effect might become too pinky um, which is why I'm a little hesitant about adding too much uh, but if you have enough layers then I think you find that um, the pinkiness will soon disappear as you uh, build up the layers so basically I'm really only going to try and leave uh, the base coat showing um, where the major uh, deepest creases are uh, where the muscle definition is and it's only going to be a very thin line anyway so uh, I might actually paint over the more subtle uh, recesses um, but they will be picked out in the next couple of layers that we do
Also what I like about my palette is the fact that my water jar fits perfectly in the recessed section in the middle. Um, my actual water jar isn't one you can find in the shops or any art shops. Uh, I believe it comes from uh, like a pasta sauce lid, one of the old metal ones. You'd have a small section at the top, like a metal, tiny metal screw. Uh, uh, so, not metal, sorry, glass. Uh, glass pot that screwed on at the top. And for some reason, it just fits perfectly into the centre of my palette. Uh, so that's quite nice. Would anyone be interested in watching a vision uh, with a different scale of figure? Say uh, 40 mil or 15 mil, um, or is uh, 25 or 28 mil the uh, desired scale? Uh, it'd be interesting to know, to know because um, I don't really uh, paint too many 15mm figures, um, which is a shame because I actually really like painting 15mm. I was painting some today from uh, Curison Miniatures, uh, which is a particularly nice 15mm company. Uh, the silver quite a wide variety of figures actually I was also painting a 54mm figure today, <coughs> a uh, Plains uh, Indian from Andrea Miniatures. Which is a very nice sculpt indeed. Alright, so that's the first colour on the flesh done. So as you can see, there's not too much of the base coat show in there. I 
I think I would uh, definitely have to run some tests to see if 15 mil shows up. Uh, I've actually got some 15 mil to hand, so at the end of the video, I might uh, see how that looks. Um, but meanwhile, we're just going to move on highlighting the flesh. Um, I'd probably use flesh base on its own, um, but I want to uh, add a little bit of flesh base into that for the next highlight. the largest scale figure I've ever painted is a uh, free up plastic uh, for conquest games and that was quite interesting to paint not quite sure uh, what that is in millimeters scale wise
but it was actually a mounted figure as well so it was pretty big uh, but it was really fun to paint actually I don't really often get to paint huge figures uh, so it's something different for me and I'd definitely like to do something like that again And the uh, actual largest model I've ever painted is um, one of those uh, Lord of the Rings uh, elephant mammoth things. I can't remember what they're called, but they've got like a huge uh, tower with men on the on its back huge plastic thing but it was quite cool to paint actually a lot of dry brushing but the uh, overall look of the model was quite impressive uh, because it's such a large piece unfortunately I probably wouldn't be able to do anything uh, that big Alright, so that's that piece of the flesh done. Uh, they'll probably just have one or two more highlights to it. Um, but for now I'm going to go on to the hat. Uh, I'm going to give the hat a highlight with English uniform. This is uh, over burnt umber, which we use for the undercoat. I have a uh, photo bucket um, account that I use uh, for putting pictures on the blog uh, and on the forums um, but uh, I don't always um, upload the things I paint to there so not everything I paint is photographed and put onto there that's uh, purely just a uh, time constraint really and the fact that I do actually paint so much stuff that uh, it would kind of be a bit ridiculous to show it all off um, on the internet uh, also the uh, space constraints you have a, an actual limit to the amount of stuff you can put on which is a shame I guess um, but it's not too big of a deal I'm going to put a Devlin mud wash to the feather now this is the uh, Games Workshop wash A 
quick reminder to anyone who wants to watch uh, previous Art Master Visions, uh, if you actually go to our show page on Ustream, uh, you can just search Art Master Studio Ustream on Google and you should find it there. Uh, and there should be a, a list or a section where you can find all the saved recordings of Art Master Vision. There's probably quite a few on there now, so uh, if you ever want to put something on in the background whilst you're painting, uh, that is available. Alright, so green ochre. Uh, this is going to be the highlight for the hair. If there's uh, a particular figure that you would like me to paint for the vision, um, you can send me a message, uh, and if it's a figure that I'm interested in painting, uh, you can just send it to me, and I'll definitely do that. Because uh, I don't always have specific figures uh, for the visions, so because what I usually do is find, uh, if it's not a figure I'm already going to paint anyway uh, I'll just sort of have a rummage through uh, my castings boxes and pick out something that I think is interesting so it's, uh, sometimes it's a bit random what I'm going to paint Uh, I would be interested in Crimean War stuff. Uh, that's certainly uh, interesting to me because I don't actually tend to paint that sort of thing, but uh, definitely would be interested in that. I'm going to give an extra highlight to the flesh now. I'm going to use uh, flat flesh on its own.
right, so that will probably do for the flesh. Alright, so not much more to do to finish him off. Um, I think the silver's dry, so I'm going to give the silver rings on the barrel a wash. Uh, I want to use uh, Badab Black Wash. If I can find it, here we go. Yeah, so I'll probably um, put two washes on just to darken it down a smidge. Here's an idea for a future vision. Um, if anyone's interested in uh, speed painting, um, that is painting a figure as fast as possible, uh, basically so you can have uh, a half decent looking figure, well a whole bunch of half decent looking figures to make a, a unit so if you haven't got a lot of time and you've got a lot of figures to paint uh, you might not necessarily want to spend uh, ages painting each individual figure so uh, perhaps I could do uh, three or four uh, speed painting figures in one vision Uh, if anyone's interested in seeing something like that, um, I'd be interested to know. Alright, so... Uh, now I'm just going to second highlight the hat. Um, I'm going to use a colour that I've kind of got into lately. Sometimes I find colours in my collection that I don't really use that often. So I try and implement them and try and make triads out of them. Uh, so this one's old wood. Um, I'm not sure why I haven't used it before. I just kind of didn't feel the need to. but. Um, I sort of picked it up and implemented it into a triad and I've also used it um, for a kind of an off-white colour which you probably saw in the previous vision um, but it's quite interesting uh, when you do find a paint that you haven't used in a while uh, to try and uh, solve that by sort of uh, almost forcing yourself to use it um, or finding a way to use it uh, often it's uh, easy to get stuck in your ways with uh, the paints that you've uh, kind of favorited uh, so you might have a sort of a set color for uh, a brown leather or something and uh, every time you come across uh, something that has to be brown leather you sort of automatically default to that triad that you've uh, made uh, so that can you know it's good but uh, at the same time uh, it kind of ruins your creativity a bit um, so it, it is good to sort of uh, step outside your box every now and then uh, and uh, have a mess around with some colours that you don't normally use uh, it doesn't always work out so you're not always going to find uh, an extra special triad that you think really works but occasionally you do find a little gem 
uh, that's uh, worth worth experimenting for. Now, for the second highlight on the hair, I'm going to use uh, Iraqi sand. Um, this is a Vallejo colour. It's just uh, been um, branded by Flames of War, um, but it is actually a Vallejo. Alright, so for the feather, I'm going to use Pal Sand. Uh, I apologise if the focus is a little off here, it's just um, the depth of field uh, on this camera. Um, you can uh, change it, but I've got it designed at the moment so that when the figure's at this angle, it's in focus. Uh, so when you tilt it up, it does start to go out of focus slightly. Right, I'm just going to do the eyes in this colour. Switch over to a teeny tiny brush. It's actually quite rare that I get the eyes right first time. Um, I think it's just a, a natural thing when painting eyes, unless you paint them first and uh, get them absolutely uh, how you want them before you even highlight the flesh. Uh, it's kind of a natural thing to end up messing about with them a little bit I think even the most experienced painters tend to uh, have uh, problems with eyes but I wouldn't really say I had problems with them ah, but you catch my drift so he's basically finished um, I'm actually quite happy with the way the barrel looks. Uh, I think the rings are fairly dark enough. I don't think I need to darken them down that much. Alright, so I guess that's the uh, finished English Civil War man in a barrel, having a bath, frolicking around, flicking bubbles everywhere. Um, just quickly though, before I go, uh, I'm just going to see what a 15mm figure looks like on camera. So this is a Curison Miniatures 15mm. I actually think the uh, detail shows up quite nicely 
so I think uh, 15 mil might actually be a good idea for future visions. It might uh, because they don't take as long to paint. I might be able to do more than one per vision as well, uh, so that would be quite cool. Um, I do use triads on all 15 mil. Paint them in exactly the way, same way that I paint uh, 28 mil figures. Obviously, uh, don't always put eyes in them though. All right, so that's that. Um, thanks again for watching and uh, visit our website artmasterstudio.co.uk visit the Steve Dean forum uh, check out our blog and Facebook page and I'll see you all next Friday for another vision thanks again for watching and good night <laughs>